them on camera so people that are watching can see that that's going to work. Okay, very good. So if you'll uh, think about uh, what you're going to share with the congregation, I'm going to ask Lanny. Why don't you come up here, Lanny, just for this one case and share the story, and a microphone is on its way. You can just stand maybe just right here, and it's just fine. And after half an hour, I'll, I'll stop you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm always willing to testify and give testimony for what Christ has done in my life. We are so thankful, my wife and I, that we are here today to fellowship with you folks. And through the years, uh, we've went through some ups and downs in our walk with the Lord. We were coming over the mountain this morning, and we were talking about a friend who called me late yesterday afternoon trying to find a home to live in. He has a family of five. And in this day and age, it's difficult to find a place to even rent, and they can't afford to buy a home right now. And so as Darlene and I were traveling over the mountain and looking at the beauty of the scenery and everything, we were looking back through our life and uh, took a span back to when we were canvassing in the publishing ministry, and there were some difficult times where we didn't really have a place to live. And as we were talking, we were thinking about how God has blessed us and what he's done for us in our life today. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful piece of property that overlooks uh, a ridge that looks toward Canada, and we have a beautiful garden and a very nice home, modest home, nothing fancy. But uh, the Lord has been good to us. It's all paid for. And we indeed have a lot to be thankful for just for that alone. About two years ago, or thereabouts, maybe two and a half, has it been that long since they got COVID? Um, I got the Delta, which really knocked me down and took me out. A good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Ron Fleck, you folks might know him, he assisted in helping us at that time, and I saw him about two months after that, maybe three months, six months, and he talked to me in private, and he said, Lanny, he said, you were this close, this close. What a gracious God, and how he loves us so much to provide for us and take care of us, and we're still here. We're praising the Lord. We have so much to be thankful for, and uh, the blessings even become more and more each day as we reach our age in life. We're thankful to be alive. I might request one thing from you, if I would, and it's a, a prayer for a neighbor that I met about six to eight months ago down the road from us. His name is Paul, and his son is Mike, and we have had the opportunity to witness to them in sharing with them what Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. And uh, they uh, attended a series of meetings last fall with Whitehorse Ministry, and Steve Wahlberg had a presentation, and they went to that. They now have the great controversy and steps to Christ and desire of ages in their home. And if you would just pray for those folks, we'd really appreciate it. And Paul's wife's name is Elizabeth. Thank you. All right, why don't we get two or three of you lined up so we kind of know who's going to be next. Who would uh, like to be next? Just put your hand up and don't uh, be too bashful. All right, Donna. Who would like to follow Donna? Can I see another hand? Anybody? Anybody get ready to follow Donna? All right, Lloyd. Thank you, Donna. Well, I just wanted to thank the Lord this morning. You know, a few years ago, the fires came through and the floods, and the Lord has a verse about that in Isaiah 43, 2. He says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And, um, you know, we, es we escaped the the forest fire, and then the flood came, and uh, the Lord saw that we were still able to get in and out of our property by a little footbridge, so we're thankful for that. But just recently, there's been a lot of um, some physical challenges, some health challenges, and I still think of this verse, they're not literal fire and flood like that was, 
but the Lord has been carrying us through those and giving us strength, and there's just little gifts every day, whether it's just watching our hummingbirds or seeing the garden grow, the sun coming up in the morning, and I'm just so thankful for, for those little gifts where he shows his love every day and um, keeps me going, keeps my strength going. And I probably broke your 30-second rule, but... Even every breath. Every breath. Yeah. Does Lloyd have a microphone? Can I see who would be next so we can... Okay, Chris. Go ahead, Lloyd. I was sitting in a class, I think it was history class, as a sophomore in Pule Pulaski County High School in Somerset, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And somebody came from the office, principal's office, said, Lord, you want it in the office. <laughs> they didn't know why. When they got there, there were two men there wanting to see me. One was Elder Z.R. Curry. He said, would you like to go to for Cabinet Days? Cabinet Days? I didn't know what Cabinet Days were, but a young man? Sure. I felt like an adventure. So I found myself in Highland Academy the next year. Later I heard some comments about that. He's going to be a preacher. He's going to be a Seventh-day Adventist communist. <laughs> well, I have never looked back on that decision. Mm. And always, the more I live in, in this message, the more precious it is. And I hope that it would be the same with all of us here and around the world. Amen. Thank you. Who's going to be after Chris? Can I see a hand? Okay, thank you. Chris, please. Some of you know me, and there's some here that don't. And I was raised um, in an Adventist home, in a Christian home. And I really want the children to listen to this because growing up, I was, it was about do's and don'ts. And I never learned to have a relationship with God. I always wanted to do right. I always raised my hand to go to the youth congresses and, you know, do go to the nursing homes. And, and you know, I ended up spending some time in Thailand, 10 months. But Satan had a stronghold on me to where I was doing things. I, out front, I looked like I was doing good, but behind the scenes, I wasn't. And uh, I grew up, I really loved music. We had music in the home. And... Um, got to the point where I was going to clubs, listening to music, and then one thing led to another. And, then, and it was a very slippery slope. I, I stopped paying um, tithe, stopped paying offerings. But I w held on to one thing. I would never do, I would never work on the Sabbath. Hmm. Even if I went to the club on Friday night and closed the club at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I'd still would go to church on Sabbath. Hmm. Um, but, you know, I, when I got married and had children, I always struggled with money, and I never understood. I made very good money. But then, you know, my, my first wife passed away with cancer and very young age at 34, hmm. left me with four children. I raised them out, and I wasn't going to get married again, but the Lord was very gracious to me. He brought my wife, Jeannie, into my life. And after we married, I finally just got sick and tired of, you know, fighting. And I gave my heart to the Lord. Amen. And I started paying tithe and started being faithful. And the Lord was faithful to me. And ever since then, I've never struggled. doesn't mean that I've been down to the last penny. I mean, there's been times where I've, you know, been, you know, I own my own business and sometimes... When you own your own business, there's times you, you come, you know, you make sure you pay your guys, you make sure everything's getting paid, but sometimes you do without, and you come down to the last maybe a hundred dollars in your account. And but the Lord's always been faithful; He's always supplied me with work. He's always supplied the funds. And you know, if you're faithful to God, 
Commit your life to God. He will always be faithful to you. He will always bless you. It's not about works. It's about your relationship with him. So my plea is with especially young people that you learn to have a relationship with God and trust in him. He will take care of you because he will. He will always take care of you. But if you're not faithful to him, the scripture says it. He says, if you're not faithful to me, you know, he told the Israelites, you will go into captivity. And they got in captivity many times. Mm. And he will let us mm. fall and fail. Mm. But he doesn't want us to. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to have a, a successful life, Christian life, a relationship with him. It's just being faithful to him and doing what he asks us to do. And he will always come through. Amen. Thank you. Who would be after Renee? Somebody? Give us your hand. Okay, Joel. Renee? Yes, I just want to say how much this church and the people here have changed my life. I had really walked away from God and, you know, who kind of helped me get started. And it's just been this wonderful ripple effect where I walk in here and I feel like I'm so welcome and so home. And everybody, I think, knows I had the fire and... I went into DSHS to get what I thought I was going to get some help. And this lady was so nice, and there was a lot of resources that she's been helping me with. And she looked at me, and she said, she said, how, how can you be smiling and laughing? I said, hey, I said, the Lord spared my life. I said, there must be something out there that I'm meant to do that's good. And she looked at me, and she says, I've had the worst day ever. She said, it's been terrible administrative problems. She said, I got up this morning after 40-some years of marriage, and my husband says, we're going to get divorced. And she looked at me and she said, can I shut the door? And I said, sure. And she said, would you do something for me? And I said, what's that? She said, can we pray together? Amen. And I've never had anything like that happen to me. So my point is don't underestimate the power of your testimony or what you're sharing with people. Amen. Amen. I just, Amen. just, uh, just, it made my day and I thank the Lord. And she helped me find some extra help that I didn't know was out there. But she looked at me and she says, I was crying. She said, I thought I was just going to get in my car and just drive away. Mm -hmm. And she said, I feel like I want to just stay alive. Amen. And I invited her to church, so hopefully Amen. we'll see her here on Sabbath. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. That's yes. really precious that God uses us to bless other people in spite of whatever's gone on. Yeah. Who would be after Joel? Please be ready to give me your hand so we can kind of proceed. Our dear, dear neighbor. Okay, Joel's next. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We'll have you. I don't think any of us feel good at this. <laughs> and I'm the one that scheduled this. Um, I think I've shared with many of you that uh, when I was kind of a young man, a young dad, I, I noticed that um, it, it dawned on me that if you did not carefully pick make good choices when you were young, that those choices as you aged would catch up with you and be, would be compounded. And I was raised as an Adventist, as Chris was saying, and, and yet that doesn't really matter where you came from because, you know, the saying is God doesn't have any grandchildren. We're all, we can all have God directly as our Father. And it took quite a few years after that realization of you need to uh, make good choices, before I actually feel like I started to fully embrace that and let it really sink into my heart. And then once, once that happened, once I fully embraced that, I felt like I was seeing I see what Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then you just feel this weight, like Jeannie said. Thanks for sharing that song, Jeannie. You have this weight. What if... What if Jesus wasn't there to take that weight away from us? That is an amazing thought, that Jesus would take that. So my favorite Bible verse became Isaiah 118. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And then this morning when I was writing that down so I could share it with you, 
I notice the next verse. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat of the best of the land. God has good things for us. And as in my life, I've begun to embrace that idea, which I first occurred to me and was milling around in the back of my head more than 10 years ago, that I needed to focus on how to change and how to allow God to change me. Because that's what God wants to do. He wants to change each of us. I have a tendency to be grumpy, to speak grumpy words. Those things aren't what God wants me to speak. He wants me to be cheerful, like Renee was saying, cheerful and smiling. And so there's another promise in Isaiah uh, 49, 25. It says, even the captives of the mighty man will be taken away. We can be captive by our own habits, our own thoughts, our own feelings. A lot of times we put a lot of emphasis on our feelings. That person wronged me. We start thinking that. And when we think that, we can't, we can't smile. We can't look around. We can't rationally analyze the situation and realize, no, that person just made an honest mistake today. It says, even the captives of the mighty will be taken away, and the prey of the tyrant will be rescued. Satan's a tyrant. We don't want to serve Satan. And if you're operating in a selfish mode, which I've done many days, you are working for the tyrant, Satan. And that shows, you know, we, um, we wonder why our children leave the church. Mm. And yet, are we allowing God into our hearts and into our homes? And I've had a lot to learn in that area. And then the verse continues, for I will contend with the one who contends with you. God goes to bat for us. And then the, the last verse, the last line, it says, and I will save your children. Amen. And my goal is to cooperate with that. I've not been a perfect parent. I've not been a perfect spouse. By the grace of God, my eyes are opened, and I'm seen every day. Make better choices. Allow God, give that frustration, that self-focus to God, and ask him to come into your heart. And it's well worth it. And I Amen. hope that you'll join me in that. Amen. Thank you, Joel. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Judy before she talks. Can I have another hand? Someone that's going to share? Okay, Lonita. Judy, uh, years and years ago, was baptized and uh, a member of the Colville Church. When we moved here, we had no idea that just down the road from us was this lady. Uh, and it, I'd love to take more time to tell the story, but we learned about her background and she and Neva especially have become very close friends. But uh, I don't know, Judy, if you're going to talk about your dear husband. Um, we love him. He's kind of a crusty old guy. But uh, you know what? He has a heart of gold, Judy. Am I, am, is that, isn't that right? And one of these days, he's going to decide to be a follower of Jesus. When we talk to him, you know this. He says, I'm, I'm, I don't... I'm just going to go to hell, but uh, uh, keep, uh, keep Ernie in your prayers. Would you do that? He's a precious guy, but Judy, please. Did you have a microphone yet? Okay. <clears throat> Get me in courage. Um, I didn't know when I came to Sabbath this morning that my blessing would be right here. And I've known Linda and Daryl and Linda Winslow for a long time. And she's encouraged me and her husband. And um, Marie and Leon, Pastor Holmes, and all my families, everything. Um, S Steve Huey, they've all been in my ha family. Mm -hmm. And here in my heart, where I've held these people because they've encouraged me. Um, being in the Catholic. I couldn't understand God about death and the purgatory. And, and then when I found out the peace and, and joy of dying, actually, and there's no purgatory, there's no torment, you just die. But then you wake up and you see Jesus. And then another time I got another beautiful rest. But 
Linda encouraged me and Marie and Leon encouraged me about the Sabbath. And then, and when I found out the Sabbath, that was just awesome. Michelle, my little, my daughter, she was about three, and I danced around in the living room with her. <laughs> and I just praised God that he showed me what this real truth is all these years. I was in going to Sunday, and, and I loved going, and I just didn't know when I found out the truth, it was just awesome. Amen. And I got my rest, and I don't have to look around for any more. It's right here. Yeah. The Sabbath day. Yeah. I guess I'm done. That's okay, Judy. Thank you. Judy's daughter, Michelle, has become a good friend of ours, and her husband, Joe. Keep uh, them in your prayers. Joe is a uh, diesel mechanic par excellence. You know these uh, diesel-powered uh, locomotives? I think four go every night to Canada and two to California. He keeps all those running. And uh, we, pray for, we pray for Joe and Michelle. And Evan is here now. Evan is her granddaughter, grandson. Now I've forgotten who it was that was next. Oh, yes, Lonita. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for several days, wondering what I should share. share as my testimony. But I think what I'm going to do is share how I came back. I was raised, as several others of you have said, that I was raised as an Adventist. My mother was... Uh, a fourth generation, no, third generation Adventist, so I'm a fourth generation. And she raised us kids, five of us, to believe in God. Unfortunately, I'm the only one that's still attending church, and I wasn't always. Um, I had my, my wild years, and even after I came back to the church, I had a lot of um, worldly habits and worldly desires. I still do. Um, I'm definitely not finished yet. But I was working, I had taken training, several months of training, to be an airline reservations agent um, or ticket agent or you know anything in that field. And I had worked for six months as a travel agent well, actually longer than that, because I had worked over in Olympia for a few months. And I ended up in the Tri-Cities working for a small airline, a job that I just absolutely loved. I started out in reservations and ticketing, and then um, after about half a year, I was promoted to outside sales. And my job was a dream job. I would go to a different city around the Northwest here uh, every day and put our brochures in and talk about um, the airline and all the things that we did and the services that we offered, and I just loved it. And then we got a new associate manager or something like that, and he was not a very nice person. And one day, he just walked up to me and said, you're fired. Hmm. I was devastated. I was just absolutely devastated. I took my things, and I went home, and I probably cried all night. That happened to be a Friday. A few weeks earlier, I had gone looking for the Adventist Church, so I knew where it was. In the Tri-Cities? In Tri-Cities, tri mm -hmm. this is in, in uh, Richland. And I had been, um, I'd been living there for about three years, no, two years. And um, so I had found the church, and I decided this was going to be a turning point in my life. This is the hard part. <laughs> um, 
I didn't know anybody in this church. I didn't know anybody in the area that was an Adventist. And I walked through the doors. I don't think I even, I, I think I came only for church. I didn't come for Sabbath school. <laughs> but as I walked through, not the foyer, but into the church, it was just like God lifted all my burdens. I could not even, I, I didn't get up after the church. I just sat there in the sanctuary for probably an hour. They had a fellowship meal, and one of the ladies came in and invited me to, uh, to the fellowship meal. I couldn't have eaten anything right then anyway. But she became a real friend and, and really nurtured me. And then another family also, because she and her husband left a few months later, this other family kind of took me under their wing. And I've never left since. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to be next? Did I see a hand? Lisa. I'm sorry, Lisa. <laughs> well, one of the promises God gives us in his word is Romans 8, 28. It's a promise that I'm sure we've all claimed it many times in our lives. All things work together for good to them that love God. And um, as some of you know, unexpectedly, I ended up being gone for several weeks, nearing a month, <laughs> to help a family. I was going to fly, fly out for just three days, change my ticket three times. Mm. Um, and so during that course of time, I'm looking at my email, and I'm seeing orders come in that need to be shipped. And I'm emailing and saying, I'm far from home. I can't ship your orders right now, you know, for scripture songs and children's evangelism materials and things that we ship out. And... So finally I arrive home, you know, of course, the mountains of things to catch up on are pretty big, and um, this lady emails me about her order, like, yeah, I know I need to ship it, and day after day passes by, you know, I'm just like trying to deal with the most urgent thing screaming at me, and the order didn't get out, and finally she emails again, she says, I've moved now, here's a new address, <laughs> and, and then she calls me, I see oh, a Tennessee number, I don't know who that is, but I better answer it. And she's like, what about my order? And, you know, I'm just feeling terrible about this because I know I should have shipped it a long time ago, but I've just been doing my best, but it wasn't good enough. And we've all had circumstances like that where we just, we just aren't meeting what we feel we ought to be doing. And I said, I'll try to get it out. I've, I've been working on printing the books, and they're sitting here. I've got to bind them yet, and then I'll ship them to you. And, um, and, she says, and I says, well, you know, I was away trying to help a family, and, oh, is that the kind of work you do? I'm like, no, but I do try to work with children and help families, and I'm really a tutor. I teach children. And she's like, really? She says, we've been searching for answers for our girls, and five and seven, and we just don't know what way to turn. It turns out they're a very new uh, Seventh-day Adventist family, new to the truth, new to the faith, and wanting to homeschool their girls and wanting guidance, and Oh, we must have talked an hour. And at the end, she's like, I'm so thankful you were gone. I'm so thankful you didn't ship my order on time because we would have never had this conversation. And uh, we text back and forth several times a week now. And um, God is good that out of our insufficiency and Amen. out of the things that we look at as circumstances that we wish would not have happened, God can turn them around and he can work it out for the good of his children. Amen. And so it was just encouraging to me that all things do work together for good, even things that aren't the way they should be in our lives. God is still working with those circumstances to bring glory to his name. And so that's what God did for me in the last couple of weeks. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. What do you think? Who is the Lord speaking to that is struggling to put their hand up? Anybody? <clears throat> well, Bob.
Well, I've been thinking about saying something, but I mean, it's, you try to put something into words that make some sense to somebody, and you think, oh, I can't even do this. Uh, I, I'll, just, I'll just say, um, this, this uh, Matthew 6, 19 to 26. Isn't that something? I hate that. <laughs> because because it, it, it just hits home. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm materialistic. I mean, I, I, I put God aside. I, I mean, I'm not against him. I'm just, I'm just doing something else. I'm whatever it is. Sabine and Sebastian can tell you. I mean, I'm I'm from one thing to another one. I'm buying this, or I'm working on that, or I'm 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 wishing. To, it really tells we're over in France for two and a half months, and sometimes I wish I was here because even though I, I the little job that I do driving for Catholic charities, it helps people and everything. But I'm all, I'm. It's a little bit of money, but I think, man, I could have made 7,500 bucks while I was over here. <laughs> and, and I could put that to use to buy something, you know, because this is just memories. That, that's goods. I could actually purchase something. Anyway, when, anyway, I struggle with that. And, and so much so that I put God aside. And like when, when the Sabbath comes and, and Sabine says, well, let's, let's bring in the Sabbath or let's close the Sabbath. I don't want to talk to God. I don't, I don't want nothing. I mean, what do I get to say to him? I'm sorry I didn't talk to you more. Um, but but when, when I spend a Sabbath afternoon and I sit and read and I uh, even do a couple lessons ahead or whatever and the time comes to close the Sabbath. You wish you I, had more time? No, I, I, I want to talk to him. Yeah. I got something to say. Um, anyway, it, uh, when it talks here in verse 24 about ser uh, serving two masters, uh, you, th you think you're not serving another master, but when, you, when, you, uh, when in the morning you sit down at the desk, I get up, I leave home at 4 o'clock in the morning and, and to go take people to places. I do this five days a week, the same, the same routine, a lot, and um, um, and I think, well, I'll just, I just got this couple things I want to look at on the computer, and and then I leave home without even talking to him because, mm. oh, gotta go four o'clock, I gotta go, and anyway, you guys are are giving testimonies that are that are praises and all this. My testimony is, is that I need help. Thank you for a merciful God. You're not. Not what? He's not in hell because he's no, conscious no, I need of it. Help. Okay. <laughs> I need help. I'm not. A, well, she's right. She's right. That's when this when this man back here says, "I'm just going to go to hell." Believe me, I've said that. Mm -hmm. uh, By God's grace. Well, it is. Uh, noon. I'm going to close. Uh, I'll, I'll make a short testimony. God's uh, mercy. Mm. I was uh, a young father of two children. Kathy was three. Kim was six weeks old. I was flying back from Salt Lake in a small airplane. There were three of us in the plane. We were the fathers of 11 children. And over the highest part of the Cascades, we were headed for Seattle to drop the men off and pick up Neva and the girls. Over the highest part of the Cascades, in the clouds, uh, the engine quit. I was very familiar with the weather. I knew the weather was clouds all the way to the ground. I knew that we were going to die. I informed the center, it's the term we use for the people that look at the radar screens, that uh, we, were, we had lost power and um, that I would like vectors to low terrain. Do you know what that means? And um, it's too long a story to tell right now, but it was an unbelievable miracle the way God spared my and their two lives. Just unbelievable. 
I actually told this story once here about 15 years ago. Some of you may have remembered that. But uh, Neva will tell you I walked around the house in the days following saying, why did God spare my life? There must be a reason. But isn't that the case for all of us? And I want to serve him as faulty as I am. I know you do too. And uh, it's precious to hear these stories. There's a whole bunch more stories here. I wish we could get you to share them and we could stay here for about a day. But let's pray. Father, I thank you for your mercy, for your intervention, for your patience, for your wonderful love, for your plan for us. Every one of us in this room, you have a plan. And part of that plan is that one day we'd be together with you in the kingdom with our children. I know many of us in this room, Lord, all virtually heartbroken for wayward children. So we lift them all up to you just now. And thank you that you never sleep as you work to gain their hearts back. Lord, bless this church family. Bless our visitors. We want to be people that can encourage others to come to know Jesus. We thank you in his precious name. Amen. Could we sing a hymn without even looking it up? You just join me. We'll sing one verse. What a fellowship, what a joy is mine. The everlasting What a passion name, face. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure. Alarms leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting God bless you all. Let's keep praying for each other. Here's a deacon to dismiss us. <laughs>